super highly underrated. I have never liked an e.l.f. concealer. Mmm. One of my holy grail affordable bronzers. I guess. So, today I'm doing a, another three-part series. But today I'm going to be doing e.l.f. Cosmetics. So e.l.f. is a really good affordable makeup brand that has a ton of stuff I've tried way too much makeup of. So I thought I'd just give you a quick rundown of the products I've tried. The majority of them I still have on hand with me. I am going to try and go through some of the website but I can't promise I'm going to touch on everything. Today is all base products so that is like foundation, concealer, primer, all that good stuff. So let's get into this. First is primer. So I want to talk about Paula's face primer. I have gone through so many of these. I've gone through at least two of like the normal size bottles. This is just like a little primer and go one which is quite helpful. You open it, it is kind of messy. I feel like it's like overfilled but do you know what? I'd rather it be overfilled than underfilled. Super nice. Smells like Cecilia Lemons to me anyway. I don't know like other people don't seem to like the smell of this but I don't know why. Super highly underrated really good pore filling primer it can feel ever so slightly slippy on the skin still highly highly recommend it it was like one of my 2017 holy grails i also still have the elf uh, lock on face primer i can't see that they still have this on their website they have a moisture lock now i have no idea if they're exactly the same however this is a super sticky like really really sticky primer if you want something to really help your makeup last all day, these kind of super super sticky primers are great for that. I've already gone through a whole tube with this. This is a brand new tube that I got. I got this a while ago, I'm not going to lie. I have also used the Poreless Putty Primer, the kind of Tatcha dupe. To be honest, I tried the Tatcha one, I tried the e.l.f. one, and neither of them worked for me. I've also tried some of their like spray primers. Honestly, these spray nozzles on, especially the primer sprays, are so aggressive that it's just not worth it. There are so many other good spray primers. I personally love the Catrice Prime and Fine, which is actually a setting spray, but I love to use it as a primer and as a setting spray. So next is foundation. I have, I've tried a bunch of e.l.f. foundations. I have tried a BB cream, acne prone kind of one, which I no longer have, which had a lot of full coverage. That was really nice. However, it did not come in enough shades. I've also tried the Flawless Satin Foundation. This foundation's nice. I have gone through a whole bottle. It is like a little moussey. The texture of it is a little bit like a tiny bit whipped. With this specific foundation, I actually find it's better to put your concealer on and then just go over with a very light layer of this. Um, it does have nice coverage. It has kind of a medium coverage because you can still kind of see. You can still see my pigmentation and I did put concealer on first. Personally, I just find that this foundation does not last on my skin. I have oily skin. It's harder for some foundations because obviously my oils will break apart the foundation. <laughs> what is wrong with my voice today? I appreciate this comes in a bunch of shades. Compared to all of their other foundations, this is the only one that comes in a decent shade range. I appreciate this is almost always out of stock. I like it. I don't think it's great. I think once I've run out of this, I probably wouldn't repurchase because I just have so many more foundations that I prefer and that work better for my personal skin. Next, I want to talk about the mix and match adjusters. So these things are tiny. And I have undertone adjuster, or shade adjuster. But shade adjuster is only now in two shades. I actually really like this, not for my e.l.f. products, but I have a, a CYO foundation that is way too dark for me um, because I am I'm very pale. So I have to mix a ton of this in. I do really like these. I don't think the bottles are big enough. I would actually prefer these to be a little bit bigger. At least as big as the primer and it's like nowhere near as big. That's what she said. Oh, at least she knows. I think that these are really, really nice. I personally feel like I have to use a lot of this like white adjuster to make something pale enough for me. So I don't know how pigmented the golden or the warm or the bronze or the deepens going to be. You may ha end up having to use a lot more. So sometimes it actually is better to just get the same foundation but in a deeper shade or a warmer shade and then mix those two together. Sometimes it ends up just working out better for you. But I do like the idea of these, like I said I have used them. I like that especially with these it doesn't change the formula of your foundation. So for instance, I had an LA Girl one before where it was it was like the Pro Glow foundation formula, but as a white adjuster. And the problem with that is add that into a foundation, it would become so glowy and 
I like that this does not change the formula. If you have a matte foundation, it will keep it as a matte formula. It will just change the shade. That is it. Concealer. Um, to be honest, I have never liked an e.l.f. concealer. I've tried the HD Lifting Concealer. That was okay. I tried the Camo Concealer. Everyone loves that concealer. I don't know why. It just doesn't work for me. I have very fine lines underneath my eyes. And then I've also tried the hydrating one. I appreciate like hydrating an oily skin. It's not really technically meant to be for me, but I just wanted to try it. I feel like I had the camo in such a light shade. Felt like I would try secondary formula, but in a different shade. And I just can't get on with this concealer or any of their concealers. I just don't think they have enough coverage. There are so many good concealers out there. The Catrice concealer, amazing. The L'Oreal like matte concealer, amazing like super super full coverage the collection concealer holy grail so i just it's just not for me i love the i love the packaging i love it it's simplistic i love the big dofa if this works for you that's great i just think it's overrated sorry powder the um loose setting powder i have is the elf beauty shield don't even think they have this anymore I actually really like this. I think this is really cute. It's an antioxidant armoured setting powder. I obviously don't know what that means. I think the pore powder here little thing, I thought it was really, really cute. Also has a open and close setting so you don't like just get powder everywhere, which I thought was really nice. I used it today. I love the light. I don't use it that often. It did set my makeup really nicely. There's only a couple of powders that I absolutely swear by. The Maybelline Fit Me makes my face look airbrushed. The um, Thrive Cosmetics really fills in my pores and my Peach Perfect by Too Faced is the only one that helps my uh, oils stay at bay. If you can get a hold of it, if it like if you see it on sale or anything like that in these stores and it's your kind of shade, I would say it's worth a try. Uh, setting sprays. I do not have my setting spray anymore because I'm pretty sure I finished it. So the e.l.f. Matte Magic Setting Spray, I did really like for a long time. I just have ones I prefer now, again, with the Catrice one, I just prefer that one. It has a better spray, it's more long lasting. The Wet n Wild one that I spoke about in my Wet n Wild series, super long lasting, really, really good long lasting setting spray. Unfortunately, during my whole trying more makeup, I have found things I prefer. Elf are great for kind of starter kits if you want to try something affordable. I don't find a huge amount of holy grails with Elf, unfortunately. The so highlighters, I have tried so, so many health, health highlighting products. Illuminating palette, it's super, super dusty. It doesn't really illuminate much. If you like really, really natural highlighting palettes, you will love that. I will say it only comes in one shade. So that's kind of your skin tone. And you like that, that works for you. That's great. The baked highlighters. I had a bunch of these at one point, but I have given them away. One of the reasons they were such a cult favourite for a while is because they were sheeny without being glittery. They were a nice metallic sheen. They weren't super in your face. If you weren't them in your face, you had to like spray them with some sort of setting spray or something to wet them and get them like beaming like I currently am. The shimmering powder highlighter kind of things. I used the shade Starlight Glow which is more like champagne-y and then I also have Pearl Glow which is like a white icy shade. This genuinely comes in so handy sometimes when I want a really nice icy white in a corner. I'm doing something like blue. I want something like nice and cool tone. These, mmm. I've heard so many people talk really great about these. They're not my favourite, I'm gonna be honest. I think these are really powdery. I think that they apply okay. I think you need a, if you want to have a like really metallic finish, kind of similar to the baked highlighters in a way, except they're not baked. I love the compacts. I think like you get a good amount of product, you get like eight grams. I think these are really nice, really sleek looking compacts. I'm not sure why one has slightly different compact to the other. I will say the Pearl Glow, I did get for free. So I wonder if this was like, and it just has a sticker on the back, whereas this one obviously has the writing on the front. It's better out there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I also have the e.l.f. Glow Highlighter, which is in golden. I didn't actually realise that this comes in multiple shades when I bought it. I got this because it has like a coconut scent, like a cream putty highlighter. 
I did put a little bit on the high points of my cheeks. I'm actually surprised that I've had this for a while and I've only used it like a couple of times and it's still really nice and creamy so I appreciate that about it that it hasn't just gone dried you know. I love that the packaging is like really thick. It feels quite high end in a way. This is really nice. I think these are nicer, more metallic but they do have a tiny bit of glitter in them so just be warned. Lastly with highlighters I have also tried the metallic highlighters which have this like really weird raised kind of thing again just not for me I just think there's better out there I actually had to really dig my brush in to get anything off of that highlighter it just wasn't for me so kind of going into blushes but I just want to quickly mention this one this also has highlighters in it this is the uh, modern metals I don't even know if they still have this I think this was limited edition at Christmas the highlighters in here are really beautiful sheeny highlighters the best formula i think that they personally have i've got three highlighters in here and three blushes which is also are stunning really really pretty shades i appreciate again this only comes in one shade i don't know why they do so many collections that have limited shades that's like only light to fair i don't even think medium skins can use this so i apologize if you do have fair to light skin and you can again find this palette available i reach for this all the time really underrated and i don't know why they got rid of it speaking of palettes i also tried the powder blush palette i got that like as one of the free items i think that their those blushes specifically are a bit too pigmented and you put it on your cheek and you're like whoa and you try and blend it out and it just will not blend those are those kind of blushes. I just can't get on board with them. The Beautifully Bare Glow palette. I used to love that palette. And then I went back to it like more recently when I found again more stuff that I love. And I'm just like, why did I love that palette? Again, it was nice as a little starter palette. But I've just found things that are just as affordable. And stuff that I prefer. Studio blushes. I think these are really highly underrated. They are kind of small. I used this when I went to Malaysia. I used it as like a random blush to just like stick on while I was on a 16 hour flight or something. Because I was like, well, if it gets broken or it gets taken, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's really, really affordable. I have put this on today. I've put a little bit of something extra on top. But I really love this highlighter. This highlighter? <laughs> this blush. Uh, this is in candid coral really really pretty coral shade not too pigmented you can build it up without being scared that it's just not gonna blend and they do blend super nicely really dumb mirror though and lastly i have tried a primer infused shimmer blush this is in always hazy uh, this one has a bit of shimmer to it personally i prefer a matte blush 99 times out of 10 99 times out of 10 wow that sounded so dumb i love again the packaging really nice simplistic but like pretty fancy felf i think this is like they have stepped up the packaging it isn't just like poundland kind of packaging i love that you can see the color through it i just it's not a blush for me i think it's okay i did top my cheeks with it a little bit today just to give me more of a rosy to go with the eyes not a blush that i gravitate toward i did try the luminous blush um that was a patchy shimmery couldn't blend mess so i do not recommend two more products i promise two products I actually really really like the first one is their bronzer so it is their like contour this one is in cool bronzer i actually used this light shade to uh, sat underneath my eyes today. I used to do that all the time. I really wanted to brighten because I'm so fucking pale. This does work for me. I have to go in obviously very carefully not to get any bronzer underneath my eye because that would look bad. The contour kind of shades, I used that to contour today. I did find them a little bit harder to blend than I remember. This is honestly one of my holy grail affordable bronzers. It's not very often that I find a holy grail product at e.l.f. But this is in Forever Sunkissed and this works really great for me. I used it to bronze today. I love this bronzer. I think it blends amazingly. I think it's one of the best bronzers at the drugstore. I love the tone of it. The tone is one of the things I love about it as well as it blends as well as the packaging. Again, you can see through it. I just think this is a home run product for Elf. And again, like there was a lot of bronzers that came out at one time. I think Maybelline came out with like a the City bronzer, and everyone was kind of going on about that, and everyone forgot 
about this beauty. It will still be a bronzer that I gravitate towards and I have gone through a decent amount of it, although it doesn't look like I've touched it. <laughs> so that is everything for part one. Part two will be all on eyes. So that is eyeshadows, which I have a lot of, including liquid eyeshadows, glitters, eyeliners, mascaras, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to see that, please leave a like to let me know that you enjoy this series. And please also subscribe so you don't miss it. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye.